All right, so here we want to find the one sided limit of this function. So we have the limit as x approaches zero from the positive side of the sine of 4x over 5x. Okay, so in, in this problem, we're actually going to do like a sort of like a trick, like a magic trick, so to, so to speak. And our um, like idea is to apply the limit um, of the sine of x over x as x approaches zero. Let me write that on the other side. This is a very common theorem that most likely your teacher or professor went over, you know, earlier in the chapter. And so whenever you see some, some expression written like this, that's gonna be like, hmm, I wanna see if I can change this into some form of this. Now, again, this is a theorem that um, you should memorize. Your teacher or professor um, most likely goes over it and tells you memorize this um, because it's common um, to have to know, like throughout the course, it'll pop up, you know, it'll sneak up on you. Um, there's a proof, you can always go through it and all, but it's not necessary to get proof each time. So just remember this, um, remember this um, theorem. So, so the idea is to kind of, you know, you know, do some, you know, trickery to make this um, become this in some form. That way we can apply this limit and then evaluate this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply this by a uh, interesting form of one. So I'm gonna multiply this by four fifths over four fifths. So I'm gonna have four fifths over four fifths times the sine of four X over 5x. So this whole thing is being multiplied by that. And then we solve the limit as x approaches zero. Because this, remember, this whole thing is just another version of one. Four fifths divided by four fifths is just equal to one. It's just a weird looking way to write one. Now, the reason we do this is because now in the denominator, what happens is, there we go, we can rewrite this as 4x because the four fifths and this is you know five over one those fives will cancel so in the denominator you'll have essentially four x just four x because again four or five times five over one those fives cancel so you have this in denominator on the top you'll still have four fifths times the sine of four x and now so here's the here's the, the trick you can see that you have now some form of the sine of x over x, because we just have a x, 4x, and a 4x here. So what we can do is we can call this 4x, we'll just call it something else. We'll just say y equals 4x. And we do that because then we can rewrite this as the limit as x approaches zero from the positive side of 4 fifths times the sine of y over y. Remember the four fifths, you know, just you could rewrite that as like a one. I'm, I'm just trying to emphasize this can, this can be you know, separated like this. So then you have sine of y over y. This is, is essentially the same thing as this up here. The only difference is that instead of using X, we're using Y, but it doesn't actually matter if we use X, Y, or Z, as long as the variables here and here match. So then this then becomes just the limit as X approaches zero from the positive side of four fifths times the limit as X approaches zero from the positive side of this. So if we, so we wanna write this correctly, because some professors and teachers really are gonna be strict about this, we would write it like this, write as two limits being multiplied by one another. So limit of four fifths, over one time the limit as x approaches zero from the positive side of the sine of y over y. And then you can evaluate the limits separately. Here, since you don't even have a variable in your expression, this is just gonna be equal to four fifths. And again, we're given by the theorem that the sine of y over y as you as x approaches zero 
it doesn't matter if it's a positive side or negative side because you can evaluate this. This will just be four times or four fifths times one, and your answer will just then be four fifths. So keep this trick in mind anytime you see some sort of like familiar version of like this looking expression. <laughs> 